Today, we're taking a closer look into the challenges, hopes, fears, and faith of four women who have decided to let their faith dictate and guide the way they live and the way they date. What's up, ladies? Hi. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so it's amazing because all of these women that you see sitting here, I actually have personal experiences with each and every one of them when it comes to being single women who are on fire but on purpose. And so today I wanted to really dive deeper into what this means. We're living in a world, I don't know if you ladies agree, but I feel like we're living in a world where sex is normalized and the pressure to get married by age 30 is prioritized. It's just, it's, it's crazy. So we wanna write our own narrative and kind of get you in into what we experience as single women who are really um, being led by faith. So ladies, thank you for joining us today. Thank well, thank you for joining me. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but um, so we have to the left of me, we have Maima Badio, Alexandria, <laughs> and to my right, we have Danny and Crystal. How are you ladies feeling? Good. 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 Excited to be here. It's good to be here. Well, I'm happy to have y'all. So we are in Brooklyn, New York, and um, it's very rainy outside. <laughs> but we're here. We're doing this. So let's just get right into it. Okay. So what is the dating scene looking like? How are your beliefs kind of guiding the way you're dating today? Who wants to start? <laughs> I'll jump in. Yeah. Um, so what is the dating life looking like? I want to say bleak. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I think it's maybe on purpose. Yeah. I, I feel like personally, I've taken a step back from dating the way I was um, in that I'm not dating at all. And I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional about what it is I'm looking for in myself. And also like what I think dating will be a good tool from. One thing I was really convicted about as I was dating was Every time I would go on a date, and if this person ended up liking me or formed an attachment, mm -hmm. it was now a new responsibility that I was taking on for their heart. Mm -hmm. And if I knew I was going into this dating situation without like any kind of purpose, mm -hmm. I was creating a lack of purpose for the heart that I had just already taken on. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, I ended up kind of being like, all right, I don't want to take on so many hard responsibilities that I know are not what I'm looking for right now. I'm just maybe using it for practice. So have like, you always felt that way though? Like have like with have you just started? Have you just developed this mindset? Or has yeah, it this been? is definitely a newer mindset. Yeah. I think when I was younger, dating was more about like learning. But now as I'm older and I feel like I've learned, I won't say I've learned everything, but I've definitely learned more than I did when I was younger. Yeah. Now dating is more uh, purpose-filled than it was before. How did we get here though? Was that the same before? <laughs> How did we are get we here? Dating, like, are we on more of a purposeful journey or what did that look like before? Yeah, I would, I would say the same uh, for the most part. Um, dating intentionally and mm -hmm. dating with purpose as opposed to um, just dating for the fun of it. Right. Yeah. And it's it's nice to have you know dinner or a good time, but um, I think when you get to a certain maturity in Christ or in your walk with Christ, you really understand that you the impact and that this can have an effect on more of your life, mm -hmm. his life, if you have kids, mm -hmm. you know. So it's bigger than just you. It's bigger than just okay. the date. It's bigger than just the moment. Yeah. Um, and taking all of that into account, it sounds really like a lot of pressure to take on. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's something to really keep in mind before you just kind of put yourself out there if you're ready for that. So is everyone Christian here? Yeah. Everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're walking with Christ. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people out there think this is easy when it comes to dating. Is this easy? What are the... <laughs> so as far as dating is concerned, mm -hmm. because of our faith, because of the values that we have, I really feel like that limits potential like, people that you can date. I meet a lot of amazing men who, you know, we would be really great friends, but right. there's nothing there that we can build That's a life on. Yeah. So I, I do feel like once I've clarified my visions and my values, my dating experience has just kind of been limited because That's I can't true. just say yes to anybody, you know, at least mm -hmm. not knowing what I know and what I want. That limits a lot of people. So, yeah. But sometimes I feel like the limited, you know, framework, it gives you more of a focus, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the biblical standards that are, like, outlined help me see, like, oh, okay, this scripture aligns with this trait that he has and this one, Ooh. you know? So it just gives so, yeah. me more of a, an outline of what I'm looking for, you know? Okay, so that sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. 
What was the dating scene like before you found Christ though? Before you started walking intentionally in dating? What was that like? How is the, what is the difference between now and then? Like dating habits or? Yeah, your dating <laughs> habits. Cause I know for me, it hasn't always been like this, right? So right now I'm, I'm walking in Christ. I'm dating intentionally. I know exactly what I want, thank God. But um, but before <laughs> it wasn't like that. Before it was like my options were more open. I think right. that's what Myra was saying as far as being restricted. Like what are some of the things, the question is, I guess, what are some of the things you used to tolerate or you that was okay with you when dating before as opposed to now? when you sit down at where we go? So I used to be like totally fine if you didn't go to church. I mean, that was your thing, your personal thing. Okay. I didn't want to in, you know, embark on that. You make your own choices and I make my own choices. Um, and I learned from that, that just the whole thing about being equally yoked is so important. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until I realized. <laughs> I was gonna say until it's too late, but it's, yeah. it, I, it's not too late because right. it's a learning experience. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was just about, you know, okay, well, I don't want to put too much pressure on them to come to me mm -hmm. as, as opposed to us having this mutual relationship. But what I found was that there's, it's not just that. It tells um, to so many different aspects of a relationship that's like, okay, well, if we're not going to be on the same page with this one thing, there's yeah. like a branch of things that we're not going to be yeah. on the same page about. Like what? What are those, what, are, what is that one thing that you know <clears throat> If he doesn't have this, or if he has this, it is definitely not gonna work. Hmm. <laughs> That's heavy. Yeah? yeah. Okay, so you both, you all are Christian. So, if a, would you date a young man who is not of the Christian faith? No. Okay, yeah, so that's so that religion. Yeah. That is that is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, what has your experiences been like with people who are not believers? Believers meaning not Christian. So I, you know, I've had friends who we were very compatible, mm -hmm. you know, outside of faith. And I have I've always had friends who were not believers as, as well as friends who are believers. And it's been really difficult to explain. Like I know we get along. I know this would be great, but. Mm -hmm the way that I want to build my life and the, the legacy that I want to leave, the kind of husband that I want to raise my kids. Yeah. You know, faith, not just faith, but a relationship with Christ has to be central in the way that I want to build my life. And so it's been, you know, people look at you and say, well, like, we get along. You know, I've been friends with people for compatible. years. And we're yeah. so compatible. And it's yeah. almost like you're being small-minded. You know, they look at you like, like you're really, really religion yes. is the end all. Like, you can do your thing. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, that's just, I can't get past that. That's mm -hmm. number one, number two. Even with the Christian guys that I've interacted with, mm -hmm. no sex before marriage has been my thing for them. Like, cause yeah. to me, I think if you're serving God and when the sex topic comes up, you're like, oh, this is fine. Then you're already, you're mm -hmm. automatically exed out of that, my is that, is that, no, no, is that, no, I'm glad, I'm so happy you brought that up. Is that a thing? Like, what are your experiences like with that um, sex, no sex before marriage? Are, is anyone having challenges with communicating that or just struggling with that? I think it's a journey. I think um, it and, is. and everyone's walk is different. Um, and your personal experiences, whether you, if it's something that you've experienced at an earlier age, mm -hmm. and then again, as you grow in Christ, or as you um, have different experiences, you realize then that this is not something that you want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I find and I hear from other people as well, having the yeah. boldness to articulate that to somebody and then seeing how they react to it is yeah. what makes it like, okay, well, what is this person going to think about, um, yes. about you know, yeah. this topic and finding someone who's on the same page. But yeah. once you get past like what other people think because you're grounded in yourself and you know what it is that you want and you're confident about what you believe, man, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, I love that. So why no sex? Because there's a lot of people that I know who are watching this. Yeah. And they will look at us and say, well, what's the big deal? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having sex with my significant other. I love him. I know he loves me. What would you tell that that woman who's kind of struggling with that? Danny, you look like you about to come. <laughs> <laughs> come crazy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I feel like you want to. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. let's, no, I, I, let's go. Go ahead. <laughs> I would say just because, like, in the Christian faith, like, I believe, I think, that God, you know, created marriage to be an image of Jesus in the church. And so mm -hmm. sex would be that 
the vulnerability and the the like the consummation yeah. of that of, in the visual representation of Jesus' love for the church. <laughs> and so outside of marriage, we're kind of we're portraying that you can give that love and that depth of vulnerability to multiple people, whereas it's supposed to be a very intimate thing. Mm -hmm. If we believe wow. that, that's why God created marriage. Wow. Okay, yeah. Alex. Stop. <laughs> yes, I think I think we can all agree to that. But you were gonna say. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I mean, coming from a personal standpoint, I was engaged previously, and realizing that my own convictions had to change. Because um, you, you get engaged and you're like, okay, well, this is the person I'm going to mm -hmm. marry. Mm -hmm. Like, is it, like, I'm almost there. Like, does it yeah. matter? Um, and realizing, just as you said, that sex and even the act of marriage has to do with a picture that God is trying to, to portray to the world. In that, like, mm -hmm. he gave a promise that said, if you take this step with me, like, I will cover you. And we, we celebrate that promise with worship. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, when we take that step publicly with the person that we're marrying in the day of marriage, mm -hmm. we're saying, you know, I want to take that step with you. And we celebrate that through sex. Mm -hmm. Celebrating something that's outside of the covenant, outside of the promise, is a, I don't want to make it sound like weird, but there's a mm -hmm. perversion yeah. of what was actually, it was intended for. Wow. And it's also taking the value of what he's symbolizing, like mm -hmm. his full sacrifice, full death mm -hmm. for who we are, who we were, for who he is, mm -hmm. for who we're going to become. Mm -hmm. In that same way, we step forward together, who we were as single people, stepping into who we are as people are promising something to come mm. into who we will be together. Ooh, yeah. It's no longer two, we're now one. Yeah. So if we're doing something out of order, we're messing up that picture. He said, I took you from where you were yeah. to be who you're going to be in the same way. Took you from who you were into who we are going to be. If, you, if you're throwing sex before it, you, you've completely messed up his program because he has it pictured, he has it set apart and consecrated for a reason. Do now. you explain this to the guys that you date? That's <laughs> why I said I'm not dating, girl. I said, oh. so you come I don't like, got this kind of time. Did you, <laughs> well, did you explain this to your, your No, I didn't fiance? have that. Yeah, I didn't have that conviction before. You didn't have, you weren't convicted? No, convicted. no. I was didn't younger. think you were doing anything wrong. No, I, I was also, I was just younger and I was younger in my walk. I've been yeah. saved since I was eight, but I definitely hadn't been like into it the way mm -hmm. I am now. Um, un until I like had to grow up physically in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to see some things, I'd understand something. I grew up kind of sheltered and then very mm -hmm. Caribbean home, so there wasn't much I saw. I didn't even know what drunk looked like in college. I was like, yeah. I was like why is this person acting weird? Um, so I, I had to see some things before I understood the value of why. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. unfortunate. I wish I could have not had to see why things were valuable before I took them yeah. as valuable. But yeah, in my conversation, I think I let more things happen to, to me. You. Yeah. Right. And then was like, oh wow, that shouldn't have happened. Or oh wow, I didn't no, really want that. No, and that's very interesting too. Too. And also what I think is interesting, Alex and I were having a conversation the other day. Mm -hmm. Alex is um, actually pretty younger than all of us mm -hmm. here currently. 21. 21. <laughs> and what is your, you were talking to me a little bit about your relationship status and how, what your journey is. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm currently in a dating relationship, um, Christian-centered relationship. and. Um, 21. Kind of, You're 21. 21. We love this that. This doesn't really happen. And we I'm, love that. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And it's a blessing because I haven't always been this way, but I believe God has allowed me to step into this new season where we're being intentional, um, mm -hmm. just trying to abstain until marriage, um, just really trying to bear like mm -hmm. fruit um, of the Holy Spirit in our relationship and just trying to do it the way God um, called us Intended. to. Yeah. Is it hard for him? Um, I think, well, he's kind of leading the way, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. It's his idea <coughs> not to have sex. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's both of our ideas. It's both of yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doing that together. So, I think that's beautiful. I do want to um, also have a transpa more transparent moment with all of you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before we even came to the point where this is what we want to do, there's no sex for us, this is where we're walking. Um, where, what did that transition look like 
for for you? I like to speak on that. Mm -hmm. um, something that Danny said just you know made me think of this, but. Sometimes we go from not being exposed to being exposed and it's like, like you said, we wish that we didn't have to go through that to realize the power of what we have and the mm -hmm. value of what we have, but that's some of our stories. And I grew up in the Assemblies of God Church, but we knew the word, we knew, you know, what was accepted, what wasn't accepted, but based on who you surround yourself with and the, and the values right. of outside the church, it's so, especially when you're a teenager, it's mm -hmm. so easy. I, like, I remember being at the lunch table and like me and my girlfriends were like pretty much plotting and like who was gonna lose a rigid like well, this, and I grew yeah, up in the church. Plot, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that was crazy. So it was like, oh, mm -hmm. don't wanna be the last one. And there was we it, we were curious, everyone was doing it, and that was just, you know, so there was this and I never felt like good. I always felt guilty because I knew yes. the word. I knew. And so even yes. through college, I had these I just felt always I guilty. guilty ones too. Always felt guilty. Yeah. And, and honestly, what I want to say is that it's not just about sex. It's mm. about falling in love with Jesus Christ to the mm. point where mm. you choose his word over the oh. affection mm. or whatever from anyone else because I'd rather offend you, whoever, mm -hmm. than offend him. So it's it's not just, we're not doing, no, 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 we're trying to love Jesus. Yeah. And if he says that this is good, mm -hmm. we believe that this is good. Now let's put faith mm -hmm. on the back burner, whatever. Like if, if you don't believe in Christ, mm -hmm. there is still this thing in you that wants to be united to someone to feel totally safe, right. totally accepted. Absolutely. Not, you know, every time you, you, you unite and then you, you come apart, it hurts. And to do that over and over again, there is something in you that is not built for that, mm -hmm. if you don't believe in Christ, we get that. But you know, there's a there's a there's pain a person, yeah. that comes from separation, yeah. Yeah. right? So just you know, with faith, I choose this. Without faith, I still would have come to yeah. choose this because this is the, a better way to live your life and to to believe for more. You know? Ooh, yes. Anyone want to thank you for that? I think that is something. Um, that's maturity. That's maturity because I'm even glad that you mentioned when you were younger. Um, how everyone was competing like we weren't always like this you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying there were there was temptation <laughs> there was listen I love him but I love him y'all ever told your mom but I love him at the age of like <laughs> <laughs> Age of you like told 30. your mom that? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, 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 no. no. <laughs> stop. You will not leave me by myself. Like, no one said, but I love him. Your mom must Yeah, your mom is something else. Right. Wow. We didn't have those conversations. No, we did not. Oh my gosh. Then, yeah. All right, so let's talk about that. Because I, had a, I have a cool mom. Nice. I would talk to her, but I mean, not about everything. Yeah. For me, I, I just never... For, Okay, so sex was probably a thing for teenagers or, you know, whatever the case may be. But I feel like I was just too busy with track and with mm -hmm. school to be. But I feel like college kind of really is very tempting. Mm -hmm. And I used to have those conversations with my mm -hmm. mother. Yeah. And I feel like nowadays it's, it's very difficult, even before it's very difficult to have those conversations. Even about not just sex, but about faith and what that means because parents don't want to... I don't know what it is. Like they even probably struggle with speaking to their their children mm -hmm. about that. Like, what are your what have been your experiences with? Everyone was like, no, they don't talk to their parents. Or they didn't know talking to mom. I know Danny never spoke to her mom about it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Um, and also, it wasn't even on my radar just because I had a lot of fear. Um, That's what it is. Yeah, fear, fear, not of like my mom my mom but of sex and sexuality mm -hmm. i just didn't understand it so i was like terrified of it so in school like if anybody was to talk about it like mm -hmm. i probably acted like i was about seven years old mm -hmm. around conversations mm -hmm. around sex until i was maybe 23. like i think it was maybe just a couple months ago about it was able to like watch kissing on like movies and not be, yeah like, i feel like, like very... i am <laughs> it's really strange but it's not because i i don't struggle with it mm -hmm. it's just there's just a lot of shame around it for me um around sex around sex yeah, yeah around sex sexuality desire mm -hmm. um it was just never something that was allowed to be talked about mm -hmm. um so when i went to school especially my first school it was a very small school um in new england and it was the t it was the kind of school where people were experimenting a lot because there was a lot of alcohol use it wasn't a dry campus at all um, but it was so small that anything that happened in the sexual realm, everybody knew about it by Monday. Mm -hmm. And oh so, right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anything that happened over the weekend, 
everybody knew about it by Monday. So that was actually, God used that because my, my thing was like, I'm not dating or talking to anybody from college because I don't want my business out there. So I did not date. I mean, I went on dates, but it wasn't it. Like I, there was no desire to sleep with anybody to go into anything until I was done with right. college mm -hmm. because I was like, I just can't. Um, and I had so much fear that it was going to be found out. Yeah. So that's why I waited until I waited. <laughs> I waited until I was in my first relationship okay. and who was the person I got engaged to for. I was like, you know what? I waited this long. The shame's got to be gone by now. Like mm -hmm. the, the reasoning has to be broken from it by now. And also I'm in this relationship. I don't want to leave this relationship. So it, it was hard for me to talk mm -hmm. about sex because like, no, well one, no one was talking about it. <laughs> and if you were, it was strictly regulated to mm -hmm. guys addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. There was never mm -hmm. women who struggled, struggle with pornography. Okay. Women who, you know, throw bachelorette parties with like dildos as prizes. Like nobody mm -hmm. was talking about these things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, Maybe I- Maybe in your friend group, my friend group. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I need to join your friend group. <laughs> nobody was talking about- <laughs> no, Nobody was, was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, nobody was, okay. nobody was allowed to talk about design. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to that <laughs> Nobody was talking about what it meant to be a woman with sexual desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. So, besides the word, the Bible, <laughs> that is our, um, <laughs> that's where we go to for our principles and our values. But how are we, what else are we doing? Are we commute? Are we engaging in communities with other women? Mm -hmm. How do we cope with that? How do we balance mm -hmm. that? I think it's just important to lean, like you said, on the body of Christ and um, just for Christian sisters because like as Christians, it's so important for mm -hmm. us to be real about our struggle, you know? Like, yes. God designed us with sexual desires. It's, um, I think it's just important for us to convey that it's natural and to not be hush-hush about it because I think one thing the enemy likes to do is to feel like you're something's wrong with you, you're mm -hmm. isolated, you're feeling yeah. you're wrong and mm -hmm. kind of like accuse you mm -hmm. um, and to just like uh, just putting the burden of guilt on you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when we're able to unite, you're like, no, this is how God made us, but he also made us with um, just the ability to abstain and just yeah. be walking mm -hmm. through that together, being real with each other. Because people that are not Christian are being real about it. So yes. it's like, we need to yeah. have yeah. Oh, yeah. Alex, yeah. thank you for saying that. <laughs> because one of the things that inspired me, <laughs> that inspired yeah. me when doing this, um, with doing this episode is the fact that I feel like everyone out there has a voice in the world, right? You can have a show, you can put a show on and you know, they'll talk about sex. They'll talk about how women in their 30s and their 20s are having sex. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's not all of our story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important for us to share mm -hmm. that. That it's important for us to say, well, no, 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 I'm not a part of that. I am actually not having sex. This is what I do believe. And writing your own narrative and sharing that. You um, asked yeah. a question about just how are we coping? Or mm -hmm. just, you know, how are we making it work in this world? I think that, you know, there are a lot of different things that we can, community is huge, but just being focused on purpose is, is paramount. We yes. have to be, like have something that we're doing that. and because, because sexual energy is still energy. You know, when, when you're passionate about something, there is, there is an energy that comes with that, mm -hmm. fulfillment that comes with that, that maybe we'd be seeking mm -hmm. elsewhere. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean it's not a challenge. And, and you know, we have a mutual friend who is, is you know, is, um, is being courted and courting in, in this season. And she's taught me so much about accountability. You yeah. know, I, I, I thought I was a lone ranger. I did what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I had a lot of guy friends who there was nothing there, but sometimes, you know, feelings would emerge. And had I had accountability to say, hey, I'm going to so-and-so's, I'm gonna be leaving at this time. Like she is legit, like, yes. like I will send you a picture of me in, in my car at home, matter of fact, on my couch. Yeah, it's amazing, fun. and I don't think we open up our lives yeah. to yeah. accountability like because that because things on our own. Right, but right. I know for me, if I know I'm gonna have to check in with so and so tomorrow and tell her how yesterday, and I can, I'm not gonna lie to her. There is a level of just mm -hmm. self control that maybe if I were just living for myself and in the moment that yeah. you, you get what I'm saying. So I we need each that, other. Though. I actually love that because there are times where I'm just like I'm not telling you what I'm doing because I know. <laughs> <laughs> what she's going to say, but accountability is definitely important. Right. This was awesome. I want to thank all of you for coming in and just sharing your testimonies and your truths with us. And if you're watching right now, I just, I hope that this definitely empowered you to go after what it is that you want intentionally and with purpose.